Question 3 on vertical projectile motion. Um, the question says a ball of mass 0 0.06 kg. So let me just go ahead and write that down. So we have our M. Um, we have our M, uh, which is 0 0.06 kg. Uh, it's thrown vertically upwards from the balcony of a building 3 meters above the ground. Um, okay, the ball reaches a maximum height h above the ground as shown in the diagram below. Um, hopefully, you can see the diagram on the left hand side, uh, and then it says ignore the effects of everything. Um, that's what we always do. And then 3.1 uh, it says name the force acting on the ball while it is in free fall. Um, if an object is in free fall, uh, the only force acting is weight, right? Or you might want to call it a gravitational force. Yeah, whatever floats your boat in that way. So there we have it, a gravitational force. And then um, the velocity time graph uh, below represents the motion of the ball from the instant it is thrown upwards until it hits the ground okay um so let's do a bit of analysis of this vt graph uh, just to see what i was regarded as positive uh, did they regard up as positive or down as positive when they sketch this vt graph um so uh, it's thrown up from a certain with a certain velocity and then that velocity uh, keeps on decreasing right and then our graph uh, also keeps on decreasing. And then at the maximum height, uh, V0, so at time 1.02. And then after that is going down, and then uh, the, the graph is below the x-axis. So they took up as positive. Uh, that's an important thing to, to, to realize. Uh, and then question 3.2 says, uh, write down the acceleration of the ball at time t equals to 1.02 seconds. Uh, the acceleration is um, 9.8 meters per uh, second squared, right? But then this is more of a trick question. Uh, they're trying to see if you really know vertical projectile motion. Because you can see there at t uh, equals to 1.02 seconds. Um, the the vt graph uh, it cuts the x-axis so the velocity is zero so if you don't really know your story and then you see in that it, uh, it it cuts the graph and then you have velocity of zero some people might be tempted to say the acceleration is zero uh, just because you know you don't really know vertical projectile motion like that uh, but then the thing is uh, the uh, acceleration of the ball is always 9.8 meter per second squared regardless of what the velocity is and what's going on on that motion um so let's move ahead we have 3.3 3.3 says um consider the areas a1 and a2 uh they they are they are denoted there on the graph uh shown in the graph above write down the numerical value uh, represented uh, by the difference in areas A1 and A2. So um, let's look at area A1, right? Um, area A1 is a triangle. So um, we are going to have a uh, half uh, base multiplied by height, right? And then so it's just going to be half of uh, the velocity uh, multiplied by uh, the time. And then A2, uh, we have the same 1 over 2 base by height, uh, 1 over 2 the velocity uh, multiplied by the time. Uh, but then the thing to realize here is that you're multiplying uh, velocity with time and uh, distance uh, equals to uh, velocity multiplied by time, right? Or this can also be speed. So uh the the difference between area two and area one uh is the it is the difference in the distance covered right so area one is from uh when the ball is thrown uh to the maximum height right and then 
area two is from a uh, maximum height uh, to the ground so what we are interested in is this portion here this portion and the question says that um uh, that uh, the where the ball is thrown from is three meters above the ground right so the difference between area one and area two uh, will give you uh, three meters that's how uh, the question is interpreted um let's move ahead 3.4 3.4 uh, point one says calculate um speed at which uh, the ball is thrown upwards so okay we're going to regard uh, only the part of the motion from when the ball is thrown from the balcony uh, to the maximum height. Why am I regarding uh, only this part of the motion? Because at the maximum height, we have uh, free information. Uh, in that way, I'm just saying we have VF equals to zero at maximum height. So that is information we're getting for free. And then we also have A equals to uh, minus 9,8 uh, meters per uh, second squared. Uh, I'm taking up as positive, right? So that's why acceleration is negative. Uh, so here we have to find uh, VI. And then we know from the VT graph, we know that at the maximum height, uh, T is equal to 1.02 uh, seconds. So we have this we have this we have this we are looking for this so what we do we only have uh, four equations of interest in vertical projectile we'll look for an equation that has this given uh, these variables we have and then vi and then we can use that to calculate vi you will realize that that is vf equals to vi plus a uh, delta t uh, VF is zero. We already know that because we're regarding the motion from the balcony to the maximum height. And then uh, VI is our unknown. A is minus 9,8 uh, multiplied by 1,02. So um, VI equals to uh, 9,8 uh, multiplied by 1,02, uh, which is equals to, uh, let me put that in the calculator real quick and uh, 9.996 meters per second yeah so um there we have it uh, we have our vi um let's move ahead says uh, 3.4.2 says uh calculate the height of h right so okay here i'm going to take um you can see that uh, from the ground to the balcony is three meters right so from a uh, balcony uh, to maximum height uh, we're going to have uh, some distance covered right and then that distance covered uh, plus the three meters uh, will be equals to our height so um, i'm taking i'm regarding that motion again the motion from the balcony to the maximum height to calculate uh, the distance the ball covers from the balcony to the maximum height then when i add uh, the three meters i'm gonna get um i'm gonna get uh, the height right so i have vf uh which is zero i have vi uh which is 9.996 uh, meters per second i have g uh, which is minus uh, 9,8 uh, meters per second squared and then what else do I have? I have T uh, which is equals to uh, 1.02 seconds um, okay we have the equation uh, VF squared equals to VI squared plus 2A uh, delta Y yeah this equation yeah seems to work so we're gonna go ahead and use it um, apart from this equation, there's also uh, delta y equals to vi delta t uh, plus 1 over 2 a delta t squared. So basically here yeah, we can use this equation or we can use this one because uh, we all have delta y there and then vi and vf we have them and then the acceleration. It's always given. 
so um let me choose the second one because the second one i won't have to uh, make delta y the subject of the formula uh even if you know it's not that complicated um so okay delta y equals to vi uh we determine it to be 9,996 and then delta t is 1,02 uh, plus 1 over 2 acceleration is minus 9,8 and then uh, delta t is 1,02 uh, let me put that in my calculator real quick and see uh, what I'm getting so 9,996 I multiply by 1,02 uh, plus 1 over 2 multiply by 9 by minus 9,8 uh, multiply by 1,02. Uh, that is giving me uh, 5.1979 uh, meters, right? Uh, so this would imply that h equals to 3 plus uh, 5,1979. Uh, which is um, 8,1979 uh, meters. Uh, so what you can do here, uh, you can try using uh, the other, the other, the other equation, uh, this equation that we have here. Um, here it is. And see if you get uh, the same answer. So that is 9,96 modulo over 1, comma. okay. Um, I think that's correct. Uh, let's move ahead. Uh, 3.5. Uh, last but not least, it has six marks. So as soon as I see six marks, I just assume that I'm going to do a lot of work. It says calculate. Um, okay. Uh, there's some information given. After hitting the ground, the ball bounces vertically upwards and reaches a, maxi a new maximum height in 1.16 uh, six seconds. So from a uh, ground uh, to new max right uh, we take in 1.1 seconds so the ball is thrown from the balcony it comes down and then it reaches uh, some new height right i don't know if the new height is above the balcony or it's below the balcony but from uh, this point to this point uh, they're saying that we take 1.1 seconds yeah, that's what they say. Um, and then the question says, I'll uh, calculate uh, the work done by the ground on the ball while the ball is in contact uh, with um, with the ground. Okay, so yeah, work net uh, is equals to uh, the change in EK rush. And then the work done by nine uh, conservative forces is a uh, change in EK uh, plus change in EP. And then our uh, work net is also equals to work one plus work two, uh, blah, 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 and so on. But then if you pay attention here, uh, the information we have uh, or th that which you can extract is the is the kind of, is the velocity at which it is the ground and the velocity at which uh, it leaves uh, the ground and with that said uh, it means that we're gonna have to use one between uh, the two equations that has a kinetic energy right so okay let's uh, go ahead and do that so we're gonna have um so now we're supposed to find a uh, velocity at which uh, we hit at the ground right and the ball is the ground and then the velocity at which uh, we leave the ground at least the ground right so if we take the motion from uh, the maximum height uh, until it reaches the ground so we're gonna have okay so Okay, VF is what you are interested in. Uh, we have VI, uh, which is zero, right? Um, and then A, we have it, obviously. And then we don't have T, uh, but we have Y, right? 
So we're gonna look for the equation that has four of those variable and then our our VF a variable of interest will be uh, the unknown. So the equation that has all that is uh, VF squared equals to VI squared plus 2A delta Y. Uh, the reason why I don't have to look at any place uh, to to find this information is because uh, to, to choose an equation is because I've been doing this for so long. So when I see given information, uh, the equation that I need to use comes to my head automatically. I don't have to think about it. So um, if you getting surprised, oh, how am I getting all this kind of stuff? Uh, it's just skin in the game. I spend more time solving these problems uh, every now and then, and then eventually uh, you'll get used to it. So VF squared is our variable of interest, and then VI squared uh, is a uh, zero, right? Uh, the velocity at the maximum height, and then plus two a is minus nine comma eight, and then uh, delta y is uh, the height which we calculated, um, eight point one nine seven nine. Let's take that as uh, eight point two. So it will gonna be it's gonna be minus eight point two uh, because we are starting from the maximum uh, going down. Uh, and then we took up as positive, so down is negative. So if I uh, put this in a calculator, I uh, get, let me do that real quick, 2 multiplied by negative 9,8 multiplied by negative 8.2. I'm getting 160.72 uh, uh, square roots on both sides, and uh, that gives me. 160.72 that gives me a velocity final of 12.6775 uh, um, meters uh, per second right um, so I have at uh, the V uh, at which we uh, strike uh, the ground right now we're supposed to find the V at which uh, we leave the ground so the V at which we leave the ground, we're going to regard the motion from when we leave the ground uh, to the maximum height. So here we're going to have a VI and then um, we're going to have uh, the time it takes. At the time you say that it's 1.1 um, seconds. So we have this. This is our unknown. And then at the maximum height, uh, this is known, it is zero, right? Zero meters per second. And then, um, yeah, we have A. So if you have this variable, uh, the equation to use is um, VF equals to VI uh, plus A uh, delta T. Uh, so VF uh, will be equals to, um, actually, our VF is zero at the maximum height. So what we calculate in it, uh, VI, and then plus uh, minus 9,8 uh, multiplied by 1.1 uh, seconds. Uh, so uh, let me put that in the calculator. Uh, we're going to have a VI of uh, 9,8 multiplied by 1,1, which is 10.78. So we have uh, the mass of the object, and then we have... Uh, the VI, which is equals to uh, 12, 6775. And then we have the VF, uh, which is what we calculated right now. Uh, let me write it here. And uh, this is 10.78 uh, meters per second. So um, if we have these three variables, uh, the equation to use is uh, work net equals to uh, delta EK, right? Uh, so this will give you 1 over 2, 0 0.06 kgs. And then uh, VF, uh, that is 10.78 uh, uh, squared, right? Uh, minus 12.6775 um, squared. So if I put that in the calculator, I get, uh, let me do that real quick. 10.78 uh, squared minus... 
and 12.6775 squared uh, I get uh, minus 1.3353 joules uh, for so for this question uh, this will be the answer um, I'm still gonna do uh, more questions from this question paper uh, May June 2021 uh, fiscal census paper one